Today, I'm going to walk you through how to use a tool called Nero. I use it for as a virtual whiteboard, and it's a great way to document uh, surveys or interviews that, that you have with people or just to document learnings that a group has. I've used it in Kaizen's. I've used it in individual meetings and trainings. Just a great tool. So you, when you click on the link for, to go to a Miro board, you'll see a, uh, you'll get to a link like this and you can scroll in or scroll out. And the beauty of it is each person that has access to this board has their own view of the same stuff, but they can uh, zoom in or out as they need for themselves. So this is an example of just a racy diagram that uh, I, I put in here. And I'll share a little bit with you about the screen. First of all, on the left, you'll notice that you have this bar that allows you to add stuff to the board. So let's say I just want to add a shape. I can pick whatever shape I want and you know put that anywhere I want. I can even work with that shape and make it a different color if I want. Um, I can type something. Um, I can change the font. There's all kinds of things I can do to stuff that I add. Um, Here's a text box. If I want to add a text box, I could do that. Um, and you can see other things as well. This button at the top, this will give you templates that you can add. These are popular templates that are used by a lot of different people. Um, in this case, I use this um, racy template. I believe I got that from here. Yeah, here it is. Um, this is one that I created myself. But if you want to look for what other people have created, just go into the, the template and, and here's one called icebreaker template or dot voting. And if I clicked on this and I said, use the template, it would just put it right here in my board. And you see how the board gets bigger or smaller based on how much content. I can always change that. If I wanna get a little closer, if I wanna move it over here and, and go into this new thing that I just added, I could do that. Um, I can move stuff around, I can edit it. And once I give people access to it, the beauty is, I can give them edit or view access and they can do the same uh, if they're edit access. If they're view access, they can zoom in and out, but they can't add anything. The other thing that you can do, which I really like is add um, what they call frames. And this is a frame and it's really just a page designation. So I'm gonna add one here and I'm gonna call, I'm gonna add a custom one and it puts it in here for you. And I'm gonna drag it to say, you know, I want this frame to be right around this, um, let's say brainstorming, I'll call this brainstorming. I'm gonna label this frame as brainstorming. Okay, and then I have another frame over here that's my racy diagram. So I'm gonna in insert another frame here for my racy diagram. Oh, it put it over here, but I want it to move over here. Okay, and I'm gonna surround my racy diagram and all the content that I wanna be part of this frame. I'm gonna call this racy. And as I keep adding content that's related to my particular board, then I can put it anywhere. I can zoom in or out, put it anywhere I want, throw a frame around it. And then that's how I can teach people to navigate to it. So at the bottom, you'll see another menu. This has to do with if you're facilitating a meeting, these are tools that you would be using or attending a meeting. Let's say I wanna see what frames are out there. I would click this button on the bottom called frames. And then I can choose to navigate to either the racy diagram or the brainstorming. These are my two frames. So that's a very useful tool. You can also use some of these other here at the bottom presentation mode. It'll just change the way all this content is viewed. You can add a comment. Um, you can start a chat with people that are looking at the board at the same time that you are. Um, cards, I don't really use too much. You can even do a screen share. So this can be a, um, a sharing device as well. You can video yourself. These are all sort of meeting tools. The one I like is this timer here. If I wanted to give people 10 minutes to give me input, I could say, okay, can everybody throw in your name and answer this question? And I said, I'll give you eight minutes to do it. And I could update this and it starts, it starts timing. And the thing will uh, pop up when the time is done. There are a lot of other tools in here as well, but this is just the basics so that you can see how the Miro board works. And if you wanna add a, um, any kind of content to the board, you're gonna use this menu bar to the left. Okay, this is where you'll, you can upload a file in here. You can um, add shapes, you can add comments, 
you can even write things with a pen uh, if that's what you want to do. So lots of options, lots of flexibility. The important thing is you can add content, uh, your users can add it, people that you want to share this content, you can make it private so only you uh, are able to share it. So when you share this with others, your options, if you own this board, um, your options are going to be, excuse me, if I hit share, I can just send an email to invite people. And then I have to identify, are they able, if they're on my team, uh, I have to identify people that are on the Miro board team, then they can either edit it or they can view or comment. If I just send it to somebody that's not on my team, let's just say somebody that I'm working with, then uh, I can just send them this email directly and anyone with, it's gonna send them this link to this board, which will take them right there. Anyone with the link, I have to say, they have either no access, they can edit, comment, or view. And I usually do view because I only send this link to people that I know. You can set a password, you don't have to set a password, that's up to you. But those are kind of the basics of Miro. So I find it's best just to get in, get started, and um, you can probably generally solve most of your own questions uh, just by experimentation.